Welcome back to my reviews of Inside Number 9, Series 8. A glorious return to form, said the Radio Times. You see, according to them, the show was somehow off form during Series 7, so I have to ask, were we even watching the same series? I thought it was one of the strongest they've ever done, and believe me, trying to rank those episodes was a sheer nightmare, just because most of them were that good. Anyway, we started out with episode 1 of series 8 back in December with The Bones of St Nicholas. The review's linked below in case you missed it. And now we're continuing on a weekly basis with episode 2, Mother's Ruin. And I'm sorry to say that Stephen Reese will not be doing their usual BBC podcast this year, which is really disappointing. I always enjoyed hearing them talk us through all those behind-the-scenes details, as I'm sure we all did. So I'm afraid you're stuck with me for now. But don't worry, I'm sure if we all put our heads together, we can still work out where is the hair, where is the hair, where is the hair, where is the hair. Um, incidentally, if anyone has seen the hair this week, please let me know down in the comments because I haven't found it yet. Right, so the plot of episode 2 goes thusly. Steve and Reese play Harry and Edward Blackwood, the sons of notorious East End gangsters Annie and Harry Sr. Their mother passed away almost a year ago, having stashed away a fortune in ill-gotten gains, the location of which is still unknown. The brothers have returned to the family home in the dead of night to perform a necromancy ritual, through which they hope to get their hands on the cash. It's an episode where dark magic meets the criminal underworld, mixed with plot twists and black humour. What more could you want from half an hour of television? While Reese plays Edward as the ruthless hard-knot of the two, albeit the more desperate one, younger brother Harry is more of a sweet-natured sad sack. These are some of the roles that these guys excel at as actors, and the dynamic between them is really entertaining. I was reminded a bit of the debt collector sketches from Series 3 of The League of Gentlemen, though the characters they play here are much stronger, plus there's a lot more going on story-wise. We even get some surprisingly touching lines and poignant expressions between the two of them, and while those weren't even needed to make the episode work, it was a really nice touch. Joining the cast are the brilliantly funny Anita Dobson and Phil Parklife Daniels, a fantastic double act if ever I did see one. Seriously, I would watch a whole series with just these two characters going about their business, maybe having them retire to the suburbs after a life of crime but still getting into some right old scrapes together. Unfortunately, the name One Foot in the Grave is already taken. Tone-wise, Mother's Ruin is very much a black comedy, punctuated with deadpan gags, miscommunications, and one line in particular about a box of Frosties that made me burst out laughing. The timing and delivery was perfect from every actor, plus it really felt like there was an actual history between the characters that went back several decades. We also get a good dose of mystery and suspense, with plenty of twists and turns that all come together very neatly. Watch it again and you'll no doubt spot several lines that hint at where the episode is going, especially from Anita Dobson's character. There's also a lovely helping of Cockney rhyming slang, which is always great fun in my opinion. I might be biased as someone who's a fan of wordplay, regional slang and funny turns of phrase, and who's lived in both London and Glasgow. Maybe you already knew that we had rhyming slang in Scotland, or maybe you didn't have a scooby until just now. I don't know how much, if any, of the Cockney slang was made up for the episode, but it results in plenty of misunderstandings between the characters, and I thought that those gags were really enjoyable. Some of the reviews I've read didn't seem to enjoy this aspect as much as I did, but each to their own, I suppose. Mother's Ruin is the second number nine episode directed by George Kane, who started out in The Bones of St Nicholas, and also directed episode three. We really see him coming into his own here, creating tension and atmosphere while being able to turn the tone of each scene on a dime. Some real skill on display here. Another thing I really loved were the lighting, visuals and colour palette of the earlier scenes, where you've got the dark settings lit up with glowing shades of orange and teal. It can be quite challenging to make dark scenes look visually interesting, but I think they really succeeded here. Small detail I know, but I felt it was worth praising. So that's Mother's Ruin, a cocktail of necromancy and ne'er-do-wells that I, for one, thoroughly enjoyed. Now, it's only fair to warn you that there are spoilers afoot, so if you haven't seen the episode, you should go ahead and do just that. We'll see you here next week for episode 3, if I can learn how to pronounce the title by then. And while I don't want to spoil what actually happens in Mother's Ruin, I should maybe warn you that there is some gore in this episode, so I would advise that you don't put it on while you're having your tea.
Okay, so now that we're getting into spoilers, who else wanted Reese to shout out Red Ross Dump, especially after seeing that Mr. Jelly promo on Twitter? I've linked that below as well in case you missed it. That scene was savage, I do love a bit of gore, and the sound effects and reactions just made the scene extra nasty. You really never know what they're going to do next on this show, do you? Although, after seeing The Devil of Christmas way back in Series 3, I always get the fear whenever somebody brings out the plastic clothing or sheets. It's just never a good sign. Kudos as well to Reese for that possession scene. I don't know how many times he's watched The Exorcist, but clearly that was time well spent. Very creepy, very physical performance, especially while playing a character who would have been in an unbelievable amount of pain in that moment. Reese really sold it. And Steve's reaction to what he thinks is his dead mum absolving him from guilt was just great, really giving an emotional grounding to a pretty bizarre moment. Oh, and Frances just casually offing her cheating hubby and then going straight back to her true crime telly was just delightfully grotesque. I loved it. Now, there was one detail I think I was wrong about, as it didn't actually come up in the script. I did have some questions about the paternity of the two Blackwood brothers. I mean, Steve and Reese don't exactly look alike, so I felt that might be a deliberate casting choice, and we eventually confirmed that their mother had had a long-running affair with Reggie. Also, it seemed odd that the younger brother was the one named after his father, and that traditionally goes to the eldest. I mean, there are plenty of reasons why their names might have been given in that order, but I thought it was all supposed to hint that one of them, possibly Edward, would have been revealed as Reggie's biological son and not Harry Senior's. To be honest, I don't really know what that would have added, and so I don't think we missed out on anything by not having that as a plot point, but I was just a bit surprised it didn't go there. Or maybe it did in an earlier draft, who knows? Speaking of things that weren't fully explained, I wonder if the ending of the episode might end up being divisive. Personally, I think it ended at just the right point, leaving the characters and the audience with the hint that the ritual might have worked. Or maybe it's just a parrot repeating a phrase that he's learned. If it turned out to be just that, then it wouldn't be a very dynamic reveal, and I'm not sure seeing the two brothers chat with a bird before emptying a bank account would have been the most interesting part of the story either. Instead, we got the character conflicts resolved in exciting and unexpected ways before the final moment of the ritual never worked, or did it? Just to leave us on another potential twist. It's a great note to leave a short story on, and I think it works just as well with an anthology episode. But hey, that's just me, and if you like your endings a bit more cut and dried, then fair enough. I was just happy, especially after the last series had been not at all kind to animals, to see that no parrots were harmed during this episode. So that was Mother's Ruin. A glorious continuation of form for Inside Number 9. But what did you think? What was your favourite bit of rhyming slang? And where is the hair? Go have a butcher's down in the comments section, where we always like to have a good chat. And that leaves me not very long to practice saying the title of episode 3, which has to do with the phobia surrounding Friday the 13th. That's the date, not the Jason Voorhees films. So, like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring the bell for more number 9 content, including up-and-coming reviews for the rest of series 8. Till then, see ya!